Hello everyone, this is Gaiman. Welcome back to some more World of Warships. And today we are taking a look at the Tier 6 Ruho, the Imperial Japanese uh, carrier. And I have to say, I'm, I'm actually starting to like CVs. Uh, we have a good game for you. Uh, probably one of my better games. So definitely, definitely something I'm still getting used to. Uh, by uh, any stretch of the imagination, I'm not a very fantastic CV player. Like I said in the previous video, I, I'm well aware of that. This is my exploits through the Japanese CV line. Uh, but overall, I, I, I've had pretty good battles with her. Um, there are some instances where I do need to work on, which is my dive bombing. And you will see it occur in the replay um, where I'm not particularly good with the dive bombing. But once again, it's something I just need to work on and hopefully get a little bit better. Uh, anyways, we're going to go ahead and look at the stats. Survivability, when you first get her, she is 38,400 points of health, which, I mean, isn't too bad. Uh, normally, you're not going to be in the area where you're going to be hit a lot. Hopefully, you're going to be a little bit further back, uh, very similar to carriers. But once again, uh, do not be just sitting right where you spawn. You are not a airstrip. You are a carrier you need to move you need to be aware of the situation around you where uh where be aware of where any possible uh fleets may be coming in now obviously with that in mind the armor it's 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 thin it's not an armored carrier it's very very thin you could easily get citadel with high explosive so do keep that in mind um of course, by that time, you are probably going to go down uh, if something does have you in sight. Uh, you can always defend yourself with your airplanes, which we're actually going to go ahead and look at the airplanes. Now, the airplanes, when you first get her, you have one fighter, one torpedo plane, and two dive bombers. Uh, four planes in each squadron. Aircraft per squadron is around four to five, depending on your captain. And fighters, they go pretty good speed. They have 154 knots. They have uh, 1,040 points of health. There's five in uh, my aircraft uh, squadron, my fighter squadron, because of my captain. Uh, they have 39 average damage per second. Uh, they take about 12 seconds to lift off. My torpedo bomber, uh, they take about 12 seconds to launch. Uh, they have around 1,271. They have 129 cruise speed, and they will do around 8,567 points of damage. And the torpedoes will do around 40 knots uh, due to the fact, once again, to my captain, which does have the increased uh, torpedo speed and lack of range. Uh, the range on the torpedoes are 2.7 kilometers, but once again, if you are dropping them, you're going to be dropping them fairly close to a ship where they would not be able to avoid it. Uh, average damage per rear gunner per second is 11. And eh, it, it's beneficial. It will help knock, maybe knock out a fighter squadron that is on your tail. So it is somewhat beneficial. Moving on to the dive bombers, you have five aircraft aircraft per squadron 16 second for takeoff they will do 120 knots uh hit points are 1040 and bomb dispersion is around 134 to 335 meters and max bomb damage is 4600 which is pretty good now unfortunately it does not show you the fire chance which i'm actually kind of curious why it does not show you but it it doesn't which is unfortunate um, and then moving on to the artillery, you do have some secondaries, which are slightly beneficial. They have a five second reload time, 2,100 HE shell damage, 8.5% fire chance, but with a only four kilometer range. So they're, they're all right. They're nothing extraordinary. Um, and you don't have a lot of them. So once again, uh, if you are caught on the back foot, you're going to need help from either teammates or hopefully you can take them out with your airplanes. Uh, moving on to AA Defense, you have 6'4", 13.2mm guns. They have an average damage of 29 with a 1.2 kilometer firing range. And then you have your secondaries uh, that will work as well. They have an average damage of 61 with a 5 kilometer 
range, which, I mean, it's not too bad, but it's nothing extravagant. You will get more AA as you uh, get the whole upgrades. Uh, maneuverability, she's pretty quick, 28 knots. Uh, this is kind of a normal thing for Japanese CVs. Uh, the Americans uh, don't really start to get a increased speed till about the independence. So around this time, this is where American CVs actually are able to zip around the map. Well, zip around is probably not the right word, but they're able to get around, uh, be able to be in the proper position without being caught flat-footed against any enemy destroyers or caught unaware. But uh, turning circle radius is 700, 770 meters. They have a rudder shift time of 13.4 seconds. Once again... These are kind of less useful things. You're not going to be up there close. Uh, detectability range by sea. This is something you do need to keep aware is that you are you are detected at 9.6 kilometers. Um, when you're on fire, you're detected by... <sighs> when you are on fire, you are detected out to 11.6 kilometers. So fires are very damning, especially if, say, you do take out a destroyer that was spotting you. And you get lit on fire and a cruiser is behind two kilometers, they're going to spot you. So, something you just have to keep in mind. Uh, detectability range by air is 7.9, so it's it's not bad. The Ruho has a fairly decent uh, detection, so you're still able to disappear or stay hidden. Um, unless, once again, you are caught uh, flat-footed. Now, moving on to the modules. I've had the Ruho for a little while. And this is probably what I would recommend as far as what build. I went for the 122, so one fighter, two squadrons of torpedo bombers, and two dive bombers. I'm a little bit better with torpedo bombers uh, than dive bombers, so I, they are probably my main force of attack. The benefit of the dive bombers, obviously, is the fact that with this, uh, you are able to land those torpedoes, possibly get a flooding. And then you go back and you can uh, set fires. I've done this. I generally snipe CVs. I try to do that. I find that uh, you have a better opportunity doing damage against the enemy team if you take out the enemy CV. Uh, not something I would recommend higher tiers. At that tier, it is definitely a lot more difficult for you to actually snipe. So don't recommend it at higher tiers, but tier 6 is not too bad. Uh, if the map is big enough, which will allow you to get your planes around and behind. Uh, now, the other mod you can get is air superiority. So you get three squadrons of fighters and you only have one torpedo bomber and one dive bomber. Uh, so essentially a full strike package versus air super superiority, just depending on what your playstyle is. I prefer dealing out damage and hopefully taking out any enemy carriers or just focusing on the enemy team. Now, once you uh, get the B-hole, you will get additional health, uh, you will get additional AA mounts, and I believe the C-hole will allow you to get uh, decreased rudder shift time, uh, obviously with the additional AA mounts. Uh, you up, you can upgrade your fighters. Uh, they will have increased speed, they'll have more health, uh, they take a little bit longer to load out, or they have a lower loadout than previously, but they do more damage. So, good recommendation to uh, beef up your fighters a little bit so they last a little bit longer, especially against American fighters, which can be very damning against yours since they do have more fighters per squadron compared to yours. Uh, the last upgrade you can get is for your dive bombers. This will give them increased speed and hit points. Um, does nothing for their damage, but allows them to zip around a little bit quicker, which is once again, very beneficial. Um, and as you can see on our carrier, all our planes are more modernized. They're no longer biplanes. So definitely setting into the period of World War II. Now moving on to my captain. Uh, once again, nothing much has changed. I do have aircraft servicing expert. Uh, this gives you plus 5% of carrier-based aircraft uh, to the health points and minus 10% to servicing time of carrier-based aircraft. 
Very beneficial, highly recommend this. This gives you plus 10% to average damage per second of fighters for each tier of difference between them. Uh, but the most beneficial thing is the additional ammunition, so they're still able to strafe uh, while out there and uh, still be out there a little bit longer than normal. Uh, second one I went for is Torpedo Acceleration. This gives you plus 5 knots to, to a Torpedo Speed, uh, but reduces the range by 20%. Obviously, go for Torpedo Armament Expertise. Uh, this reduces the amount of time it requires to service your Torpedo Blades, which, once again, Torpedo Blades are very beneficial to have. Uh, they generally are your damage dealing for at least the Japanese and, up to, and the U.S. up to at least Tier 8 before they get 1,000-pound bombs. But last one is Air Suprem Supremacy. You get plus one fighter and plus one dive bomber, so very nice. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and jump into your replay. I actually have a really good replay. Uh, hopefully, you guys will enjoy it. I will see you guys there. All right, everyone. Welcome back to your replay with the Ruho, and we are pl currently playing on Ring. Uh, one map I do not see all too often. We have a Ruho, a Bogue, Arizona, Conic, Cleveland, two Graspe, Emil Bertin, Kirov, Phoenix, Fabuki, and Nevni on the enemy team. There is a Independence, a Zuho, Bayern, Konig, Miyogi, Cleveland, Laglacio. Le I do apologize. But Johnny, Konigsberg, Furotaka, and Agate, and a Fubuki. Uh, so this, once again, is one map I do not uh, get to see all too often. And I am going to take actually control of this camera. Um... Because there's going to be a lot of things going on right now. Now, normally I would not recommend to do what I'm about to do. Um, I generally do it because I find it a little bit easier, especially with a 2CV on this map. Actually, a total of 4. So, 2v2CV on this map. Uh, I find it a little bit easier if I take out one of the enemy CVs. And here we have some fighter planes and dive bombers uh, coming in and I'm going to try to take the best advantage on taking out as much of their fighter planes as possible. There we go. I do a strafe on his fighters. Do knock out one uh, fighter plane and so unfortunately I am now in a dogfight but that means he's no longer able to uh, look around if possible. So unfortunately I'm probably going to lose this first fighter uh, class this first fighter uh squadron which is unfortunate but my dive bombers and my torpedo planes are on their way uh they are currently moving um up here up along this northern side uh which will prove beneficial for us let me see if i can actually take control of the camera all right so unfortunately uh World of Wargaming's replays aren't the greatest in the world, um, which is unfortunate because I'm not really having a, the ability to control the camera. So I do have my torpedo planes incoming and it does look like they are spotted, but we have spotted the tier 6 uh, USN Independence. And the Independence, once again, it does have the speed to at least maneuver out of the way, but we our torpedo planes are in line now. Granted, yes, getting a lot of damage on uh, the CV will prove beneficial, but what I'm more concerned about is the possibility of floods. So I do line up my first one. I do have one torpedo bomber squadron that is taking quite a bit of losses. Unfortunately, we only get one there and we get a flood. So this will mean that the independence will probably have to use his damage control to suffice any damages further from flooding but my dive bombers are in line as long as i get one or two fires should be able to knock out this independence at least i hope especially two fires will prove beneficial because he will not have his damage control and depending on whether or not he has uh the repair party premium consumable uh will mean whether or not he can actually repair and it looks like one two six bombs and two fires and that means he is probably going to burn down to death that is very beneficial we do have our fighter uh currently working on taking out their torpedo planes and we do knock out one of the torpedo 
torpedo plane squadrons. Uh, our team's doing very well. They are pushing. Uh, they have yet to actually capture D, which is unfortunate. Uh, we have lost two ships. We have lost a destroyer and a cruiser versus their one, but they are going to lose their CV, which is going to allow us to gain air superiority over the enemy Zuho. And it does look like this independence is going to burn down. Uh, just waiting for him to go down. He should just be about dead. And the enemy team is pushing quite heavily. And we earned Arsonist. Very, very nice. Um, one of the few times I've earned Arsonist. It's not something I see all too often. The enemy team is pushing quite heavily uh, in towards A. And we do have uh, Emil Bertin taking on a Cleveland. Hopefully he can take that guy out. Now, as you can see, I am moving. I'm constantly moving. Um, this is one thing that will prove beneficial for any CV player is to always be in the proper position. Uh, you don't want to get caught back behind because some enemy destroyer has made its way all the way back behind enemy lines to find you. So you want to be able to be around your... Uh, your fleet as much as possible we do line up a drop on this furataka and unfortunately for us uh or actually fortunately for us uh his torp his fighter plane that he sent up uh does not uh spread out our torpedoes but unfor unfortunately for us we do not get a flooding on him now we do have some of our dive bombers incoming as well hopefully we can get a flood on him actually i believe this is the uh, friendly uh, Bogue uh, on our team that has and is trying to take out this Furutaka. We're trying to assist this side because we have yet to actually capture a base and we are behind in ships at the moment. But once again, with the ability of pretty much doing whatever we want, we have very little um, uh, resistance for the air um, since there's only one carrier on the enemy team uh, we should be able to do just fine now we have lost essentially lost a uh, they are pushing gonna be pushing south probably gonna push towards C I will have to say I don't think our team would have won if it was not for us I'm not trying to stroke my own ego or anything but I honestly don't foresee uh, our team winning now I am going to try to take out the Zuho trying to get rid of any last interference from the enemy CV. Uh, Zuho obviously is going to try to escape, but I'm bringing my fighters to negate any possible damages or spread out on torpedoes. Our dive bombers are lining up. See if we can get a good drop. It looks like he is turning in. Should catch two. And it looks like the friendly Bogue has dropped as well. Should be able to finish him off. Very, very good job. And I, I will have to give a shout out to the friendly Bogue. Uh, he did a fantastic job as well. So between us two, we really helped our team win this. Uh, this is probably a good example of what a good CV player can do. And once again, I, I know I'm not a good CV player, uh, CV player, but if you play your cards right you can control the outcome of map or outcome of battles um so the enemy team once again have lost both of their cvs uh we are now even actually i believe we're actually ahead on ships if i can actually count uh we are one ship ahead and we have one poor arizona arizona that is being chased down by the enemy team I'm going to go ahead and get my bombers set up. I, once again, am not the greatest <laughs> with my die bombers. Uh, lining up a drop on this Gade. See if we land a hit. It looks like I went a little early and I miss uh, both drops, which is unfortunate. That would have helped our team a little bit more if we had got some bombs on him. But, yeah, it's, it's just one thing I do need to work on. So, with that done, I am... Possibly lining up a torpedo drop on the Scotty, but I do go ahead and switch my mind over to this Konigsberg. He is a slightly slower and less nimble target. Let's see if we can get a good drop. Uh, unfortunately, I think I misdropped that. Uh, it's a little bit behind, so I might only catch him with one torpedo, if at any. And it doesn't look like that is the case. Now, I will will have to say, there there is... 
there's, I think, a possibility of improving the replay because, especially with CV replays, it would prove a little bit ben more beneficial if I had the ability to control the camera. But I do not, which is unfortunate. Now this poor Bayern is uh, just, there's not much he can do. He just got dropped by the Independence, or by the Bogue. And I'm just lining up the Savo to put the nail in the Cassie on this Bayern. Leading him as much as possible, but we should be able to finish this Bayern off fairly easily. Unfortunately, we do lose the fighter, but that's alright. Uh, that is our second kill of the game. And that's one less battleships our team has to worry about. And now we're going to try to bring the dive bombers out real quick. Now, normally I would not recommend having a separation of your torpedo planes and dive bombers. Normally you want to have a concentrated attack or the ability of drop, uh, cross-dropping with your torpedo planes. But unfortunately for me, I am a little offset on my torpedo planes, which is unfortunate. Uh, but eh, we'll, we'll try to get these strikes out as best as possible. Now the enemy team, once again, is pushing quite heavily. It looks like the Gade is trying to assist with his smoke screens as much as possible. And it looks like we have a friendly Fabuki uh, that is... Let's see. Can I take control of this camera? No. Yeah, Wargaming. It'd be nice. It'd be nice if uh, you could... Uh, allow the ability to control cameras on uh, replays such as this. Uh, now this Koenig is in line for a drop. I'm siding up and I find it a little bit easier if I get a little bit closer. It allows me to more accurately drop my hits and unfortunately I only get one bomb on this Koenig and one fire uh, which will probably mean he is going to use his damage control. Looks like he already has and the friendly Bogue is setting up for a drop on this Koenig, and it looks like the Koenig is probably going to eat maybe two. Gets one on the bow, one in the rear, which is setting up perfectly for my drop uh, on this Koenig. This poor Koenig uh, it just d does not stand a chance. Two, there we go. Kill number three for us, and all that's left on the enemy team is two destroyers and one cruiser. And this Konigsberg is trying to get out as quick as possible. Now, the God A is doing his best with his AA. I do drop, um, not my best drop here. Definitely not my best drop. Uh, does uh, kind of force him to maneuver, uh, possibly not uh, be able to return fire if possible. Uh, but I think this God A is probably going to go down. Uh, he's very low on health. Our planes are coming back in. Uh, and once again, you can see where I am. I am continually moving, uh, trying to get into a good position where I will not get hit by enemy teams. Uh, our friendly Bogue, granted he is a little bit slower, but he probably should have been moving a little bit further northeast than he has been. But he should be fine. This guy, I don't think, will have any opportunity to actually take him out. He should go down here shortly. Uh, I'm hoping for kill number four. That would be nice. Uh, we are definitely winning. Uh, we have three caps to their one. And the Konigsberg is all the way up north. Uh, probably uh, browning his pants right now. Because, yeah, there's not much you can do. Our torpedo planes are getting back in. Dive bombers are coming out, but I think we are going to win this solely on a cap alone. And we just took out the Konigsberg. So our team earned a victory. We brought home 236,767 silver, 4,255 XP, and 213 free XP. We earned arsonist. We did 73,283 points of damage, 8 torpedo hits, 7 bomb hits, 11 plane shot down, 1 incapacitation, 3 kills, 3 fires, 3 floods, and yeah, not, not bad. It's one of my better games I've had with the Ruho. We are... Uh, blah, 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 blah. Boop. We are in second on the team with a basic speed of 1,383, which is something you don't see too, too often. Most times, CVs are usually uh, lower to midline, just depending on what they were able to do in the battle. We did 35,300 points of damage against the Independence. Nearly the entirety of his health was caused 
uh, by us. We took him out. Very nice. Uh, 12,000 against the Koenig, around 5,000 against the Bjorn, and we did around 13,000 against the Zuho, which isn't too bad. Our bombs did around 8,449 points of damage. Torpedoes did around 48,919, and fires did around 14,637, while flooding did around 1,278. We shot down five, fi uh, five fighters and six torpedo planes, which it wasn't too bad. After everything was said and done, 167,967 silver was brought home. And I, I'm starting to get a little bit better, starting to get a better feel for carrier base um, World of Warships. Uh, definitely something I need to improve on and hopefully get a little bit better as I go up the lines, but we'll see. Anyway, thank you guys so much for watching. If you like what you saw, hit the like and subscribe button. You guys have a great and fantastic day. Zai Jen.